welcome back. Uh, let us write uh, just recall what we have been doing. So, let me state it as a theorem. So, T T is a semi group uh, in a Banach space. Uh, x with generator A. Okay. Then, so this all we have observed. So, there are constants m bigger than or equal to 1, omega real such that norm of T T is less than or equal to m e to the omega t t bigger than or equal to 0. And then <coughs> the generator A is a densely defined closed operator. And third one, this <coughs> spectrum of A. So, this resolvent estimates. So, we call it resolvent estimates. R lambda A. So, this is lambda i minus inverse to the power k is norm. These are all bounded linear operators in x less than or equal to m by lambda minus omega to the power k for all lambda greater than omega and k equal to 1, 2, etc. Okay, so, and this m and omega come from the estimate of the uh, semi group. Okay. And again <coughs> let me again stress there is no power m. Okay. So, for example, uh, we know for a bounded uh, operator. So, if s is in B x, then norm of S power k is less than or equal to norm of S to the power k. Right? But in this case, we cannot get the norm of this powers just by using r lambda a because that if we show that this that is left le, less than or equal to m divided by lambda ome, minus omega then the power includes m power k which is not there okay so this uh, important thing uh, you notice okay so this m does not change with k and only in the denominator you see that k okay so hill yoshida theorem is essentially uh, the converse of this theorem. So, let me just state that. Okay. So, theorem. So, this is the celebrated theorem in its most general form. Hill-Yoshida. Uh, a densely defined uh, 
closed operator A in x ok in x generates a semi group T T if and only if the resolvent estimates So, this R lambda A uh, power K. So, this is condition 3 in the previous theorem. So, M divided by lambda minus omega to the power K for all lambda bigger than uh, omega and k equal to. So, for some constants m greater than equal to 1 and omega real. Okay. So, in this case Uh, we have norm of T T ok. Okay. So, again interesting to note that the resolvent estimates are only for real lambda bigger than omega. Okay. So, that is sufficient that is sufficient though this entire half plane uh, is in the resolvent set. Okay. So, given a sem <coughs> semi group we have already seen that this is generator A satisfies all these properties. So, it is essentially the converse that given a densely defined operator A satisfying this resolvent estimates how to get this T T. Okay. So, that is again essentially uh, inverting uh, the Laplace transform. So, I am not going to uh, give that proof. So, it is lengthy and quite technical, but let me write some formulas. So, this is how you derive the. Uh, so, these are let me call it exponential formulas they are not really exponential. There are many, there are many. So, let me just write a uh, uh, couple of them. Okay, so, this. So, T T x uh, is limit omega tends to infinity no let maybe let me use omega tilde so omega is already there 1 by 2 pi i so this is essentially the inverse laplace transform uh, omega minus i omega tilde omega plus i omega tilde e to the uh, lambda t i suppose lambda t or lambda a So, this is 
uh, inverse Laplace. And this is for x in d a. So, that is sufficient because d a is dense. So, one extends uh, that by continuity and okay, similar ones. So, let me just limit uh, k tends to infinity. Okay, so, this is k by t or k by t a power k x. Okay, so, this formula is inspired by so, for scalar functions we have this e to the x is limit k to infinity 1 minus x by k to the power minus. So, this is for scalar function and since t t is almost like an exponential. So, one proves that the limit exists and with uh, appropriate bounds. So, it is technical quite technical and uh, uh, so let me just write one more thing maybe just watch. So, this is how we prove the existence of the semi group uh, given a densely defined operator A satisfying the resolvent estimates. So, limit k tends to infinity i minus t by k a to the power minus k x. Okay. So, this is how you prove the existence of uh, the semi group given a satisfying these things how to uh, get this t t. Okay. And then fi finally, we have to show that whatever t t we uh, define and show that it is a semi group with uh, uh, appropriate bounds, then we have to show that its generator is precisely a. Okay. So, there are uh, two parts in the. <coughs> so, given a first construct t t the semi group t t and show that its generator is precisely a. Okay. So, in the remaining uh, so in practice this uh, theorem is uh, to apply this theorem to a concrete example. So, for example, suppose you want to this abstract Cauchy problem. So, we have more or less seen that in order to get the solution A has to generate a semi group. Okay. And if we apply want to apply Hill-Yoshida theorem, the main obstruction comes from these resolvent estimates. It is not just one resolvent, but all the powers. Okay. So, that is not required. Okay. Some simplification is possible when m, m is equal to 1. Okay. Now, we concentrate that. Okay. So, it is somewhat difficult to apply Hilyushida theorem as estimates. Uh, for R lambda A 
power k uh, are required for all k. Okay. So, some simplification is possible is possible if m is equal to 1. Okay. So, essentially it is contraction and semi group essentially that is what we see. Okay. And now, we concentrate on this k uh, m equal to 1 and eventually we see that that is the <coughs> beautiful analysis we get to Lumer Phillips theorem that we do, do not require the resolvent at all. Okay. The conditions are so simple you do not even see the ray. So, that is beautiful analysis. Okay. So, let me start with this corollary that is very interesting. So, if you look at the conditions in Hill-Yoshida theorem, they are really complicated. Okay. So, if A is a densely defined uh, closed operator in a Banach space of course, uh, such that R lambda A no power at all, no power at all okay, is less than 1 by lambda minus omega for all lambda bigger than omega. So, m is 1, okay. then a generates a semi group T T such that uh, norm of T T is less than or equal. actually you can absorb. So, now there is m is equal to 1. So, you can actually absorb and make it uh, <coughs> a contraction semi group. Okay. So, in particular if omega is 0 a generates a contraction. So, of course, we are going to apply Hilyoshida theorem to prove this corollary. So, this uh, one line proof. So, R lambda A less than or equal to 1 by lambda minus omega implies. So, here we are saved. So, we can take any power. 1 by lambda minus omega k for all k 1 2. Okay. So, the conditions of hill yoshida theorem are satisfied with m equal to 1 and this omega. Okay. So, when we take omega equal to 0, then uh, we get a contraction semi group. Okay. Okay, so, in particular A generates a contraction semi group 
again st same statement I will write it semi contractions. Contraction semi group uh, if and only if norm of lambda or same thing I am rewriting it less than or equal to 1 for all lambda positive. Okay. So, of course, the converse statement of the corollary the converse statement in the corollary are also true. Corollary is also true. So, namely if T T is a contraction semi group then this condition holds true. Okay. So, that that just condition m equal to 1 makes life so simple, so simple right. So, the next step is to remove even this resolvent altogether. Okay. So, this is uh, Lumer Phillips theory. So, let me just begin with that and maybe I will continue with the next class. Oh, so, from a complicated statement in Heliocida theorem, we are now reducing the hypothesis to simple verifiable conditions and just conditions are on. Of course, these are also conditions on the operator A, but there is involved the resolvent. Resolvent is always a difficult uh, thing to have <coughs> uh, handle. Okay. So, let me start with a definition. So, okay, so, let H be a Hilbert space. So, again we are going to remove this quickly Hilbert space. A linear operator A is called dissipative if real part of this A x x. So, this is the inner product uh, <coughs> in H. So, in general that could be a complex Hilbert space because we need uh, complex Hilbert space at many <coughs> instances. Of course, if it is a real Hilbert space you can just remove that. So, for all x in T. So, in applications it actually implies the energy is uh, dissipating. So, for example, if you take uh, A equal to Laplacian and H is appropriate Hilbert H is L 2 of course, L 2 omega or L 2 R n and then you take uh, appropriate domain for A, then you essentially see that. Okay. Uh, norm minus radius. Okay, so, you put conditions on the domain, so that there are no boundary terms. So, by integration of parts you see that. Okay. And another example is A is skew symmetric, this also we see skew symmetric. 
So, we have already defined symmetric. So, this means what? So, A x y is minus x a y for all uh, x y in domain of A. Uh, okay. So, in this case you see that real part of A x x is equal to 0. Okay. So, this also we see uh, in couple of examples. Okay. So, the only place we are using the structure of Hilbert space is in the uh, <coughs> this inner product. Okay. So, but that can be overcome by this uh, semi inner product. Okay. So, let me just uh, so this idea is due to Lumer. So, let x be a Banach space A let me just see that. a semi inner product inner product in x is a number real or complex. Uh, let me denote it by square. So, for each pair of vectors in x, so you assign <coughs> such that uh, let me, there are some properties. So, this is uh, let me write that x plus y z is x z. So, some properties are obviously missing from the properties of a, an inner product. Okay. So, you cannot expect every Banach space to have a an inner product. Okay. So, so, lambda x y uh, is lambda x y. x x and x y less than a root. So, you notice that the one important thing uh, that is missing here. So, there is no relation between x y and y x. Okay. So, in an inner product this is an important relation either it is in the case of real Hilbert space it is equal and in the case of complex Hilbert space it is conjugate. So, this is missing. Okay. But <coughs> this is uh, sufficient. So, in this makes us uh, this definition okay. Okay. an operator A A in x is said to be dissipative if real part of now I take any semi inner product ok. 
for all x in d a for some or any ok, okay any semi Okay, so let 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 me just uh, mention. It's very easy to verify. So this proposition, this is again Lumer. So every Banach space x possesses a semi -nerd. I will just define this and you can just verify process is a semi inner product. Okay. So, proof. So, let x y belong to x define x y is equal to f y of x. So, we should get a number right either real or complex where okay, so this f y belongs to the dual dual space of x such that f y y is norm y square and norm of f y is same as norm. Okay. So, very simple, very just use of. Uh, so, since <coughs> there are many uh, elements in the dual space satisfying these conditions. So, obviously, this is not unique, but it serves our purpose. So, we verify, verify that this is, verify this defines a semi inner product. So, thus we uh, can define the notion of a dissipative operator in any Banach space. So, dissipation with respect to some semi inner product okay? and we know that every Banach space possesses at least one semi inner product and so now we will restate the uh, hypothesis in Heliosida theorem. Uh, in order to uh, see that when an operator uh, generates a contraction semi group. So, that will be the discussion in the next class. Thank you.